It's the last week in Bevy before 2025, and holiday weeks are bug fixing weeks for the most part this year, but we still get some interesting new features. Meanwhile, the community keeps going with mesh generation, new voxel renderers, and more. And personally, after working with GLTF Extras and Blender's custom properties this week, I'm most excited about the new registry schema BRP endpoint, which could lead to more add-on development. 16882 builds on top of Blendv's initial work in defining a JSON serialization for the type registry that can be queried and served over the Bevy remote protocol at game runtime. The new endpoint for this one is Bevy registry schema. And this can be really nice for things like Blendv does, which is serializing the type registry to JSON to build Blender UI that lets you interact with your component types. And with that, 16945 introduces the ability to ease between tuples of values that themselves can be eased. And I'm finding out that this showcase field is just populated more and more often over the months, which is fantastic for looking at any of these PRs and figuring out what that actually means and how it actually works. In this case, we've got an example for easing between a tuple of a VEC3 and a Quaternion with yet another VEC3 and Quaternion. And while I'm somewhat surprised that Smooth Step didn't already exist, 16957 introduces Smooth Step and Smoother Step, also known as Hermite interpolation, for easings. And finally, a nice quality of life improvement. You can now parse things like 10px into a val. A val, if you're not already aware, is one of these values, pixels, percents, etc. Which brings us to kicking off the showcases with Jarl, an overhauled picking system that's object selection, not mining, for Jarl. The new system supports animations and sprite hierarchies. From 2D to 3D, this is a CPU side mesh generation using cellular automata. The generation space here is 128 by 128 by 128 and generates in a relatively interactive 100 milliseconds or so. The demo uses Bevy eGUI for UI. Applications for this can include cave generation. And then we got precise placement of walls for Project Harmonia. This takes advantage of new dashed gizmos and includes angle and length visualizations, as you can see in the demo here. And then we've got Rusty Pong. This is a Pong style game built with rapier physics. You can play it in your browser like I'm doing right now, even against an AI. And our next demo is going to be a little bit brighter. And that's a start to a new voxel renderer based on signed voxel octree directed acyclic graphs. The image is an eight by eight by eight cube with a missing corner voxel. The author says the DAG is uploaded to the GPU, expanded into cubes via a series of compute dispatches, and then the cubes are rendered as six triangles. And the UI here, if you're wondering, is I believe render doc, which is this green icon up here. This next demo shows off dynamic lights and baked textures, resulting in no runtime 3D rendering. Now, I've actually already seen an update for next week's issue, so look forward to seeing more of this next week. And this is showing off Sobel filtering for ASCII rendering. This Sobel filter is aimed at producing ASCII output to a terminal and is achieved by adding a new step in Bevy's render graph. The source code is available on GitHub, and this actually gets another mention in the crate releases later as part of Ratatouille. This is a 3D crystal lattice simulation with 216 atoms and 1400 bonds between atoms. This is the author's first Bevy and first Rust project, and the source is available on GitHub. And oh boy, it's this simulation created while following along to steering behaviors for autonomous characters, which we have the link to on the website. The demo makes use of avian physics, Bevy inspector eGUI, and gizmos. And from many object interactions to just two, this is a really nice pixelated planet slingshotting around a star in the depths of space. And then we've got Bevy Terrain demos. This Bevy Terrain demo shows off seamless level of detail scaling from one meter to planet wide, as well as a number of data sets. The video for this one really shows the rendering off well, especially when it comes to talking about some of the rendering features in play here. So definitely go take a look at the video if you're interested in this topic. Next up, we've got CPU versus GPU collision detection. The image I'm about to show you to represent this collision detection is somewhat understandably big and flashy and bright due to all the collisions that are being detected and visualized. So this demo compares the performance of CPU-based collision detection with GPU-based collision detection. Some interesting results, such as when it even makes sense to do this, are included, and the project is aimed at a use case of hundreds of thousands of simultaneously colliding entities. And it's always nice to see educational resources get updated. This is Cataster, which is a 2D space shooter demo game aimed at being a resource for Bevy beginners. It shows off how to use crates like Avian 2D, Bevy Hanabi, and Leafwing Input Manager, and shows off certain features like collisions, controls, and pause screens. Some prototyping was done on Bevy Mini Buffer to support scriptables. 
This is a demo of that scripting support, making its way into Bevue Mini Buffer. The code is available on the scriptable branch if you want to play around with it. And with that, we get directly into the crate releases this week. First off, we've got Bevy Ratatouille Camera 0.8. Bevy Ratatouille Render has been renamed to Bevy Ratatouille Camera for 0.8 because the new system is camera centric and thus simpler. Bevy Ratatouille Camera is a plugin for rendering your Bevy app to the terminal. 0.8 brings better ergonomics, a new render strategy, and edge detection, which we saw earlier in this issue. Following that up, we've got Bevy Tune Material 0.1, which is the first release of a shader to apply to your models if you're trying to get a stylized look in the vein of Wind Waker. It looks something like this. And networking is something I have to dig into more personally, and maybe I will now that Renette has hit 1.0, and thus to match, so has Bevy Renette. Renette is a networking library for server client games written in Rust. It is focused on fast-paced games such as FPS and competitive games. The release notes include a selection of great showcases including Gunbug, Crystal Realms, and Project Harmonia. And moving on, we've got Bevy Stat Query, which had its first release this week. This is a versatile RPG stat system. The overview in the documentation does a good job of explaining how buffs, debuffs, and modifiers work, so definitely go check it out if this is interesting to you. And Bevy UI Debug Overlay is an improved version of the UI Debug Overlay for Bevy 0.15. Some of these fixes have already been upstreamed, but you can use this crate in the meantime if any of these are important to you. And that brings us to Bevy ECS Tilemap 0.15. Bevy ECS Tilemap is an ECS-driven tilemap rendering library. It's designed to be fast and highly customizable. Each tile is considered a unique entity, and all tiles are stored in the game world. 0.15 brings three times performance wins in FPS on the 1.6 million tile benchmark example. Additionally, there were compatible releases for two of the 2D level editor integrations that build on top of Bevy ECS Tilemap. We're looking at Bevy ECS LDDK here, and Bevy ECS Tiled has also made a compatible release. And into the devlogs, we've got a Bevy CLI PR train. This Mastodon thread is PR review for the Bevy CLI, which is currently in development. And then the Daily Bonk Devlog 3, a month and a half into development, this mini golf game has a working main game loop for up to six players. And in the educational section, this is a video covering Blender custom properties, which export using GLTF extras, and using that data to power the addition of components like avian colliders and rigid bodies in Bevy. And finally, a few new entries in the AAA game in Rust Bevy tutorial series were published. The link on the website is going to be to the full playlist of videos, not any individual video in particular. And that's it for this week. As always, we have all of the merged pull requests on the website if you want to take a look at any of them, as well as all of the links to all of the source code and videos that we mentioned. That's it for this year. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great new year.